These videos are offered on a pay-what-you-like basis. You can pay for the use of the videos at my website. There is a link to my website in the info box. The address is www.freelance-teacher.com slash videos dot htm or you can just use the link in the info box. By the way, I also offer tutoring via Skype and you can find more information about that Skype tutoring service at my website. Thanks. Well, one of the things we didn't talk about yesterday that your instructor covered was something called the index of hydrogen deficiency. Correct. Here's the formula for this index of hydrogen deficiency. Now, in the past, I've actually usually seen this called the degrees of unsaturation. So your textbook might call this the degrees of unsaturation, but your instructor called it the index of hydrogen deficiency. Okay. You need to know what the formula for that is. It's 2 times the number of carbons plus 2 plus the number of nitrogens minus the number of halogens minus the number of hydrogens divided by 2. <clears throat> the formula is 2 times the number of carbons plus 2 plus the number of nitrogens, minus the number of halogens, minus the number of hydrogens, divided by two. We can do a couple of examples of how to use this. So two times the number of carbons plus two, plus the number of nitrogens? That's right. Then X stands for the number of halogens. We usually use X for halogens. All right. And this could be called the index of hydrogen deficiency or the degrees of unsaturation. And this is also called the degrees of unsaturation sometimes. That's right. What does this tell us? It tells us the number of pi bonds plus the number of rings. All right. Our index of hydrogen deficiency or degrees of unsaturation tells us the number of pi bonds plus the number of rings. Okay. The number of oxygens does not appear in this formula, so the number of oxygens doesn't affect the degrees of unsaturation. This doesn't depend on the number of oxygens, just carbons, nitrogens, halogens, and hydrogens. Oxygens won't change the outcome. When should you use this? We should use this formula anytime we're given the molecular formula. Anytime we're given the molecular formula but not the structure of a compound. If we're given the molecular formula but not the structure, we can figure out some clues about the structure from the degrees of unsaturation. We'll see some examples as we go along. to do is just go over this table of absorptions and point out some highlights. Let's just look at some of the NMR absorptions for functional groups. Okay. Starting here, I guess we'll just go through these. Remember that this is TMS. Okay. This is the, T, the formula for TMS. That's always zero by definition. Okay. We just should ignore that peak then. <coughs> here we have normal alkane hydrogens, and you can see they're far towards the right, close to zero. Now we're getting more substituted. This was primary, this is secondary, and this is tertiary. And as we discussed, the more substituted you are, the further to the left you get. But these are all still in that first quadrant that we talked about. They're all still less than 1.75. Can you see how this is a good way to show a, pr a tertiary carbon, because there's the three R groups. Yeah. And this is the way to show a primary carbon, because there's only the single R group. Okay. This is a hydrogen, notice that this is not an alkene hydrogen, but it's adjacent to an alkene. 
Well, the alkene acts somewhat like an electronegative group in pulling us to the left okay. a little bit. Notice that the hydrogens that are shaded here are not the alkene hydrogens, but they're adjacent to the alkene. So this is getting pulled maybe towards that, that second quadrant of the right-hand side, between 1.6 and 2.6. <clears throat> here we have an alkyne hydrogen. Remember that the alkene hydrogens, the alkene hydrogens are, are generally less than 5, to the right of 5, and the alkene hydrogens are generally to the left of 5. It might have been logical to suppose that the alkyne hydrogens would be even further to the left, but this, this aspect isn't that logical. It turns out that the alkynes are just between 2 and 3. Okay. So they're, they're not even further to the left than the alkenes are. Here's the alkyne region. AR here stands for aromatic, which is really short for aromatic. The most important type of aromatic compound that you're likely to see is benzene. When you see aryl, you should probably be thinking of that as a benzene ring. Right. By the way, benzene has two different resonance forms. Benzene has two different resonance forms, which means that all of the bonds here are intermediate between double and single bonds. All the bonds are intermediate between double and single bonds. The best way to draw benzene, then, is with a circle. A good notation for benzene with, is with a circle, because that shows that all the bonds are symmetrical to each other. All the bonds are symmetrical to each other. Okay. Well, here in our correlation table, Notice that this is not a benzene hydrogen, but it's adjacent to the benzene. Mm -hmm. While the hydrogen that's adjacent to the benzene is between 2.2 and 2.5. So what would be an example of that? Mm -hmm. These are the hydrogens that they're talking about. They're not on the benzene. They're adjacent to the benzene. What, what, what were the numbers that they that gave for 2.2 to right. right. <laughs> So again, this is acting like somewhat like an electron withdrawer and pulling us somewhat to the left compared to the place that alkane hydrogens usually would be. <clears throat> and then now here we have a more substituted carbon that's next to the benzene. So you can see the range is a little bit further to the left, as we would for expect for something that's more substituted. Notice that when they add an extra R group, that just means extra substitution. And that would be an R group attached to the right there or something. That's right. So. This type of notation indicates this. Okay. All right. But this type of notation indicates these types of hydrogens that are attached not just to a benzene, but to another carbon chain. So this is just a more substituted carbon that's adjacent to the benzene. Okay. Here we have an alcohol hydrogen. Notice that the range for alcohol hydrogens is quite broad, from 0.5 to 6. So it's, it's so the alcohol could appear in any of those regions. How many peaks would we expect from this compound? Now here we can call these the group A hydrogens. I think you might have missed this group B hydrogen. Okay, well did we count yesterday? Did we do any examples of hydrogens on atoms other than carbon? You're right that yesterday we didn't actually look at any hydrogens that weren't on carbons, but they count too. Okay. Now we can look into that right now. All of the protons have the potential, this is proton NMR, so all the protons have the potential to have absorbances. So we should also put this in its own group, okay. group B. But you're right, we didn't have a chance to talk about hydrogens that weren't on carbons yesterday, so now we can talk about that a little bit right now. <coughs> well, we were just going over in the table what range this absorbs in. What, what, what range does the table say that this hydrogen would absorb in? Um, 0.5 to 6. That's right. We were just discussing how that's a pretty broad range over there. Something else we didn't have a chance to talk about yesterday is that hydroxy hydrogens don't do splitting. There's some exceptions for this, so for the special cases, but in the normal situation, hydroxy hydrogens don't do splitting. When we're counting up our n, then, when we're counting up the number of adjacent hydrogens, we shouldn't include hydroxy hydrogens.
that means that n for this group A mm -hmm. would be zero okay. because we're not going to count the hydroxy hydrogen. n plus one would be one, which means that these would be a singlet. Okay. They're not going to be split the way you might have expected by the hydroxy hydrogen. And if the hydroxy is not splitting group A, then group A can't split the hydroxy because okay. splitting is a symmetrical relationship. Okay. So hydroxy hydrogens generally are always singlets. Hydroxy hydrogens are generally always singlets. No matter how many carbon, no matter how many hydrogens they're adjacent to, this will still be a singlet. Okay. This is related to the fact to the idea. This is a, a consequence of hydrogen bonding, but we're not going to get into the details of uh, why so this happens. We'll just two jump right to this. No I mean, one is right. each have the singlet. That's right. Oh. Two singlets. All right. One with an integration of three, and one with an integration of one. All right. Thank you.